welcome back to another video. As you can see, we have this giant case in front of us and it looks really nice and beefy. And this thing is not messing around. This is industrial grade thermal camera. Thanks to Guide Sense Smart for sponsoring this video. They sent us this amazing Hammer Series thermal imaging camera and this thing is no joke. Let's start by unboxing all the things that it comes with and then we're gonna get to the camera itself. The first thing we're gonna take out is this little box. This is gonna be probably the manual. In here we have our quality inspection sheets, quality inspection stickers, and everything it comes with as well. And here is the book itself. Probably should give it a read, uh, just to know exactly what I'm doing. But we are just gonna get on with using it because I think I know how to use a thermal camera. It comes with a really beautiful strap so you don't lose it because you don't wanna be dropping this thing. And also comes with ethernet cable and a USB-C to ethernet cable so you can actually connect it to internet uh, or to any devices that require that. Let's take out these small boxes, see what is in here. All the accessories are packaged really nicely and beautiful. This is USB-C charging cable. So it comes with the cable so you can charge it. And in here, I would assume is the charging brick itself. And this is a chunky charging cable. So it is pretty fast charging. I think it's two and a half hours for 90% of a charge. And here is the batteries themselves. They look really freaky, but they do hold quite a bit of uh, um, energy since you can use the camera for four hours straight with each battery. And this charging station is one of the coolest I've seen. Really premium build. Like the unboxing experience itself is nice. And plus, of course, this is a carrying case, so you just put everything back and carry it to your location where you're gonna be working with it. And the charging is so nice. You just stick the batteries in and give it a charge. And it indicates also how much charge they are and when they're ready. This is really cool and stiff on the floor. Feels premium. And the last thing that we have in here, of course, is the beauty itself. The big camera. I have never seen a thermal imaging camera that big. So this is really top of the line for thermal cameras. This is pretty cool. Look at this giant screen. Uh, we need to insert one of the batteries and then get it started. I do need to play around and see exactly how to use it. But I assume just turning it on already, you can see the screen. It's really high detail. I have not seen a thermal camera with that detailed screen. And uh, let's see, it's gonna fire up. Wow, that has a lot of options. So the first option we have is just basic thermal imaging. Then we have the visual camera, then we have thermal over visual, and the last mode is MIF, so it kind of shows you more of the detail, more outlined, because here, here you can't see so much detail, so it really helps with this mode. Of course, Christmas tree is not the best thing you can look at. You can see the each individual light, how hot they are. So now let's get to the fun part, which is actually using this monster and going and doing our own inspection, inspecting our indoor environment, and our outdoor exactly where we're losing heat and where cold is coming through and make sure you check the link in the description if you are interested in such things they have also other things such as binoculars scopes and all kinds of things so you can just check out all the things that they provide and there's of course also smaller versions of this thing but this thing is pretty beasty let's just get started on using it So as you saw, it does photo and video, and it does it both thermal image and next to it, it does visual image. So you can actually see what you took photo of in case it's not clear, or if you need to layer them on top of each other. And it's very high resolution thermal image. I feel like it's the highest I've ever seen. So it's everything super detailed. And it does it also in 30 hertz, which means there's not gonna be anything blurry, such as like moving vehicles and stuff like that, or moving parts. You can also do them without having insane blur. So that's really good for that reason. So let's actually now get started and look for some cold spots and check out the stove, how it looks under the thermal camera and see that as well. 
and then we're gonna get headed outside after to check out so from the outside if we can see any heat coming out from the house so the first thing I want to show you guys is the stove as you can see we have a central heating boiler so the actual stove itself is on the outside no more than 80 degrees a lot of you are worried that we have wood sucked against it but it is all covered in water so the chamber the heating chamber is covered up in water so the actual exterior of the stove is same as a radiator in your home so there's no actual problems and as you can see in the front we also only have maximum of like 50 degrees here 60 degrees on the hottest spot and the hot part is of course the chimney flue that is over 153 currently we're in a setting that lets us do uh, lower temperatures up to minus 40 it can go and there's also a setting where it goes from plus 20 I think up to 650 and with a different lens you can go all the way up to 2000 degrees Celsius which is ridiculously hot so for industrial usage you do need sometimes temperatures that you can go that high but just as it is it goes all the way to 650 which is incredible for my mind but as you see the flue is the hottest part and then the wall that we have the heating wall it is even less than a radiator it's on 50 degrees the higher you go is on 41 so it's extremely safe and nothing to worry about in that sense so that is our stove kind of so let's now have a look at the ceiling and some of the walls and see where the cold is coming in from so now we can have a look at the ceiling so this is our living room ceiling and as you can see already there is some cold spots of 11 degrees so it's cold coming in and there also the brick there is on 14 so that is also cold coming in it's actually quite a big cold spot it looks like uh, down to 10 degrees and 8 degrees even so that is a ceiling so it means that all the heat is up there so it means it really is blowing in cold from there so something there either the plastic has a hole a mouse has made a hole or something so something is not sealed in and then also if we're going across the walls we can have a look there as well is a bit of a cold but also the top of the bricks also you can have cold just sneaking through uh, since the bricks there are no longer hollow because the brick has to cap off so the bricks just go solid through so the cold does pop through and around the windows is also going to be quite cold 11 degrees but realistically nothing that I've seen is a really a big cold spot yet but we're gonna have a look at more of the colder sides of the house because this is the warmest room after all like middle of the room is all equal temperature there's nothing no problem like the coldest spot in that corner where the stove is is 20 degrees which I don't think really is that cold okay let's check out our bedroom we are in a bedroom this is Kata's image of how hot Kata is 35.8 degrees so 36 degrees so it's pretty accurate even on getting a body temperature I mean it's a bit less of course than a thermometer would for an animal but it's almost close enough to her body temperature which is 37 38 degrees I think it's a dog temperature um, and then oh you can see the, the chimney itself there's the heat coming in right there also heats up our room the heating wall currently not working like the best it's only on 20 degrees and all of it kind of is going straight out because uh, we don't have the most draft outside so we're kind of heating up the chimney more than we're heating up this wall but that's for safer burn if we have good draft we can run through the wall if not then we got to go straight into the chimney so the chimney stays clear and there's no buildup of anything let's check out this spot here because i know that there's no insulation up there but it's actually holding up better than the living room spot with insulation it's actually the coldest spot is only 15.5 degrees which is quite incredible for actually being um, with only one sheet of insulation unlike here is four sheets of insulation and actually there at the end you can see those parts very cold just because that is the outside wall and it just goes straight out as I said that's the cap uh, which we need to solve there 11 degrees 10 degrees and the corner of the brick as well as you can see that is also the coldest because I think that is also filled brick uh, they don't do the hollowness all around they end the uh, like the ends quite solid that's why the cold just kind of comes through the corners as well a lot this this could only be solved with insulating from outside all around the house which probably we have to do if we really want to make it kind of echo home let's check out our new tower now so let's check out the tower I'm gonna start recording and even the tower looks actually more or less better than most of the home there's a cold spot up there 13.7 and that was actually blowing in some cold in there I think that connects kind of into the home and there's the plastic sheets couldn't connect so well that's just something we need to address with upstairs insulation I didn't finish and looking around anywhere else 16 degrees coldest and kind of pretty warm actually this tower is looking almost better than our home I mean we did a really good job yeah the mm -hmm. windows the large amount of windows I think is the biggest drawback for this room so there the bottom of the window is the coldest at 9.5 degrees so it's actually getting in quite a lot of cold 
there's also 9.2 and it's close enough where the dew point would be but it's not because it's not creating moisture so dew point is when the cold is too cold and the hot air kind of creates moisture and uh, that is not cold enough for it to create moisture because it is nothing on the window there but it is at 9 degrees it's pretty close I think 8.6 there at the wood frame so it's quite a lot of cold coming in through the windows alone and this thing of course um, yeah, I can show exactly where those cold spots are. The most are next to where the window and the glass is, because there's not that gap of glass separating glass, but uh, more of a solid surface for the cold to just pop through without any insulation. So that is the cold spots. That's why this room, I feel like, it cools down pretty rapidly if the heating kind of stops. But the rest of the house, since it's brick, it stays a lot warmer longer. Also, it doesn't have this mass. But that looks pretty good. There's not much cold coming in. We could check out the floors as well. Wait. That means that we have done a really good job. Oh, there's a heated floor. Right, let me focus. <laughs> so there you can see the heated floors. The pipe's running really well. And only the surf temperature, the heating heating is kind of running uh, to the end. We have kind of stopped heating now at 23 degrees. So that's pretty nice. That's what's coming out on the surface. That feels nice to your feet. There you can see the temperature coming in. 62 degrees actually coming in. But the floors are only on 24. So it's quite comfortable for walking on the floors. It's not uncomfortable. But yeah, no, there's no cold really coming in on the bottom. There at the bottom of the door, there's some cold spots, also 9 degrees. But as I said, yeah, there's the wood frame and it kind of just almost goes outside. So to avoid that, you would just have to insulate more and more and more. Um, and have less doors and less windows. But that's impossible in the perfect scenario. Yeah, you're just going to live in a, a, a kind of box with no windows. But um, pretty good, I think this tower is pretty good, and especially the floors are working incredible. So as you saw, we did the inspection also of this hallway, and this one is a lot worse, of course, since the walls, as I said, are just brick uh, without hollow inside, so there's nothing actually stopping the cold from just passing through, and it only has one tiny single radiator, so that's also just not even close enough to heat even one uh, third, even one fourth of this room. would need a lot bigger radiators to keep this place warm, but let's go, yeah. Let's get dressed and yeah. go outside. Let's get dressed and go outside and see if we can spot any heat leaking from the house, if there's any warm spots on the walls or foundations. Can it actually tell the cloud temperatures? Because I don't think they're minus 20s. But like the distance that it actually picks up is ridiculous. You can see that there's an animal there. You can see the goat. It's, the temperature needs to be adjusted because you need to adjust the range. Um, to set certain like if you're going like that far you need to adjust like that it's far away to be more accurate but like crazy detail from that distance first peek at the house and I can already see a brick hole that is leaking out 3.3 degrees 4 degrees so that's pretty much just pumping out cold, uh, hot air Let's see if we can find more like that. The window is quite hot. So the window, of course, is leaking um, coal, uh, heat, as we know. Is it minus 1.4? Um, versus the frame is around 7 to 8 degrees minuses. That's a fun for a picture of our house. Yeah, a lot different than usually. So you can see that the chimney top is the warmest part at 21 degrees. It's for the flu comes out let's just check the bottom and yeah the window there's an obvious leak at the pluses as well on top of the window I think ah that is the foam that the birds have been stealing so the foam is missing we have not done cement on one of like few windows that we haven't done yet uh, because we've just been too busy and the birds have stolen I think almost all the foam as I can see there's pretty much pluses there let's go see closer up that window oh my god it's completely out of the room So, as you can see, the tower has absolutely no cold heat spots coming out. They are a bit at the foundation. I already looked at that and the foundation, of course, with the heated floors does lose a bit of the heat, but realistically not much. I think the house overall doesn't really have so much peace. You can really see a separation from the living room to the storage room, which has huge temperature difference. Indoor temperature, I mean. It's like you can see the walls a bit glowing more and uh, it has like a few degrees difference.
so that's gonna be pretty much it with the video thanks to guides and smart for sending this over and letting us play around with something this crazy and if you are in the market for such a thing do check out the link down below and see what products else they offer it is a pretty amazing tool and I'm gonna play around with it in the future a lot more and we're gonna be using it throughout the year in various different jobs I think this is gonna be a nice tool to add to my collection but that's gonna be pretty much it for this video hope you enjoyed and we're gonna see you in the next one bye bye